What does it mean to constitute an Arts of Africa? This video will examine how three artists from the continent, Kibwe Tavares, Kwesi Owusu Nkoma, and Omar Victor Diop, employ visual metaphors to look beneath the surface level and interrogate symbols of globalization and success, asking the viewer to rethink what these terms might mean for a specifically pan-African context. Though they work from different locations and in different forms and mediums to express their creative practice, each artist focuses on some, on some conception of the moving image, whether it is Tavares' short film or Awusu and Koma and Jop series of works. These moving images tie together multiple visual works, whether that be movie frames, paintings, or portraits, to comment on a larger social or political theme. Another crucial creative practice these artists share is the use of visual metaphors to signal to the viewer to treat their work allegorically. What is a visual metaphor? Well, you probably know the term metaphor from your English class. It compares two things by using one to stand in for the other, drawing a connection between two unlike things for the purpose of revealing something like a commonality or connection about the two concepts. A visual metaphor does the same thing, uses a particular form, medium, or context in order to signify some larger messaging about society in general. Take for example Tavares' 2015 film Jonah. The film tells the story of two friends in Zanzibar who happen to take a picture of a rare fish, turning Zanzibar into a tourist hotspot. Tavares' animation acts as a visual metaphor in the film. We see the city transform into a tourist hotspot through these sequences, where newer and brighter infrastructure is built over the old city, obscuring what was once a fishing port and turning it into a spectacle for European tourists. The animation shows how the city is dressed up on the outside without changing the foundations or structures beneath them. The animation, quite literally, coats the city in a gilded exterior. Concurrently, we watch the slow decay of Mabwana's inner life, signified through his throwing up in the alleyway, alongside the decay of the fish that made him famous, signified through this animation of the fish swimming along covered in trash. After he is abandoned by Juma, we see the animation of the neon city reflected in his eye. The gilding has quite literally become the only thing he can see. Through this metaphor, Tavares is commenting on how capitalism, specifically the tourism industry, obscures the real economic and social issues in order to create a gilded and welcoming outside for European tourists while straining and severing the domestic ties in the communities who live there. Awusu and Koma's 2013 series Microcon Begins uses visual metaphor to embed human figures in a metaphorical symbolic world. He uses Adinkra symbols, which are like pictographs where each symbol depicts a unique concept or idea from the Ashanti Kingdom, which was located in what is now modern-day Ghana. In Microcon Begins number 20, the first symbol our eyes are naturally drawn to is this crescent because it is placed near the center of the canvas and the figure is looking straight at it. This is Osramni Nisaroma, an Adinkra symbol meaning the moon and the star and signifying peace, love, and harmony, specifically in the realm of marriage. This figure, therefore, is perhaps seeking love or marriage or some sort of harmony with someone he loves. Now let's look at the symbols that comprise his body. Taken together, these symbols place the figure in a spiritual world of abundance, perhaps a place of life after death, seeking out love. We get a glimpse of what his life might have been like from the symbols placed behind his head. Awusu and Koma is therefore commenting on how the spiritual can inform the political and lead to abundance. However, despite the seeming success the human figure has procured, he is still seeking connection through a relationship. The human figures in Akoma's work are therefore embedded into the symbolic world they have constructed, a metaphor for how humans create cultures and practices from our languages and cultural signifiers. Finally, Omar Victor Job's 2012 portraiture series, A Studio of Vanities, photographs artists, writers, activists, and other young creatives from across the African continent. The highly textured, highly stylized backgrounds and costumes represent each artist's unique creative practice as they co-created these images with Job. The mixed textures act as a metaphor for the conversation between these artists and their contexts. Take, for example, the portrait of Ice Tao Sene, designer and fashion entrepreneur. Sene sits confidently on a stool in front of a densely textured background of whites, tans, and browns. In contrast, Sene wears a brightly colored geometric shirt, a calming skirt of blues and greens, and patterned shoes. Such a slew of different contemporary patterns against a busy yet tonally understated background suggests that Sene is standing out among a dense crowd. She is noticeable and unique, bringing together various fashion aesthetics to create a new and innovative look. Each of these artists, using the technique of visual metaphor, call into question the idea of what it means to make an arts of Africa. Tavares is diasporic but works on the continent. Awusu and Koma emigrated to Germany from his home country, Ghana. 
and Jop works on continent but brings together artists from various countries in the portrait series. They all lay claim to the idea of being an artist of African descent, and they all bring together diasporic and pan-African ideals in their work. Tavares through his anti-capitalist critique of the tourism industry in Zanzibar, Owusu and Koma through Adinkra symbols and commentary on spiritual traditions, and Jop through his representations of artists from Africa. Together, these artists are radically defining what it means to constitute an arts of Africa, diverse, multimedia, and socially and politically conscious.